I'm really here to lower expectations on Yeah, that. a joke from Todd Howard then, but it is a pertinent point. Hype and anticipation for Starfield is at an all-time high. Fortunately, this new interview with Kinda Funny Games gives us some information on what to expect and what to not expect. So this includes things such as ground vehicles, or lack thereof, what players can do in terms of exploration on planetary surfaces, ranked tiers, and much more. So I'm going to start with the information you're likely to be most interested in, and this will be ground vehicles. Now, the answer to this is very basic, very straightforward. There isn't going to be any ground vehicles at all and no player mounts down on the surface of planets. This may be a little bit disappointing to those of you who feel that the areas are going to be vast and, uh, well, very difficult to traverse on foot. This kind of feels true. I kind of with you on that one. I would like to have seen some ground vehicles to help us get around. But Todd did go into some other details of talking about the player backpack and the player jetpack and how this would help players traverse some of the uh, larger areas. Now, this also kind of ties into another point with the game, and again, there's been a very little clarification even in this latest interview. But for a while now, players, including myself, have been speculating on whether you can traverse around the entirety of a planet. We do know, and we have had it confirmed, that you can land anywhere you want on a planet. You can simply choose a random location and then land there. Once you're down, can you continue to walk in a straight line and get right the way around a planet to circumnavigate it? But whilst Todd didn't go into details on this particular aspect, he did once again use a phrase that was used in the recent Bethesda showcase, and that is that players will land at a zone and then explore around that zone and then eventually return to their ship and fly away. So this kind of hints to me, it kind of suggests that just maybe there's not a full world map here, but rather a slightly smaller map that generates in around the, well, the area in which the player has landed. Either way, I think it's important to keep expectations in check here. Um, I don't know why Bethesda are not being too clear on this point. It would be very easy for them to come out and say, yes, you can fully walk right around a planet. Equally, it would be very easy for them to say, no, you can't walk fully around, uh, around a planet. But they do keep coming back to this point that players will tend to explore around the area in which they have landed. Um, I'll leave you the exact quote right here. We hope everybody you know, enjoys it for what it is, but it is an exploration different than we've had, where you're landing, you're exploring around that landing spot, and then you're probably going somewhere else. So let me know on what you think about that in the comment section below. What do you feel that Todd Howard is actually saying here? I've got a few other notes here that I want to talk about. Um, planets themselves, they say around 10% of these are going to contain life they're going to be you know full of flora and fauna allowing players to explore in all manner of detail but the point is that they didn't want to put life absolutely everywhere because you kind of reduce the value of that you reduce the quality of it by making it overbearing and making it omnipresent so therefore life on planets is going to feature on around about 10 percent of the total of planets so that would equate to roughly 100 out of the total of 1000 planets the rest of the planets are going to be at various degrees of barren. Todd Howard has said that there will be things here to find, there will be things for players to do, some of which will include gathering resources. But for the most part, players should expect space to be very much barren in the terms of the planets we come across, although there will be a different variety of the types of barren planets. And that brings us on to another point of biomes. Some planets will have just a single biome around the entirety of the planet. I'd imagine that this would likely go for the barren planets we were just talking about. But other planets will have multiple biomes. This is pretty interesting as, depending on where you land, it will likely mean that you can explore different types of biomes. So whether that's mountainous or desert regions or tropical type rainforest regions, we'll have to see. But it seems that some planets are going to have quite a mix and this in turn should have an impact on the type of flora and fauna that we can encounter. Now another point here is surveying planets. Players can go around planets and scan the creatures they find, scan the plants they find, as well as explore the general environment. And this will, well, count as surveying the planet. Once a planet has been surveyed, players will gather all this data together and be able to sell it, and this will be worth quite a, well, pretty penny, quite a bit of money, 
and is one way for players to go out there and make some money. And again, in case you're wondering, they have confirmed that yes, planets are entirely procedurally generated. Todd Howard said there's absolutely no way they're going to handcraft entire planets. And what happens is when you land down on a planet, the area does procedurally generate in around you. You'll then encounter handcrafted elements. So these might be pirate bases, caves, I assume caves, and other such things that you can come across. These will be handcrafted, but they will be procedurally placed. So no two players will find these locations in the exact same place. The only exception to this rule is the quest areas and the main larger cities such as New Atlantis. That means then that all players will see these specific locations in the same place. But this quite clearly is a technique that's allowing Bethesda to create this very expansive environment. It allows them to include variety but also at the same time allows them to create nice handcrafted content. Now whether or not you find some of this information exciting or disappointing will likely vary from person to person but keep in mind that a lot has been made about the potential for modding on Starfield. Players will be able to go in using the creation kit or a variety of that and mod the game to their heart's content. And within a very short amount of time, it's highly likely there's going to be a lot of mods available on the internet for players to download and fully customize their game. Now I've seen in the comment section to my videos and what is elsewhere around the internet that a few people out there are suspecting that, that just maybe Starfield won't be moddable. Just because Skyrim and Oblivion and Morrowind and Fallout 4 and 3 were moddable doesn't necessarily mean that Starfield will be moddable, and that is the opinion of a small group of people out there. Well, Todd Howard in this interview did confirm that modding will be possible with Starfield. So, for any people who were in any doubt about that, you need no longer need to have any doubt. One potential cause for well, concern or interest here is how Todd talked about this. Now he said they always want to support the creators, the modding creators out there, but that they feel that they should offer the, these uh, modders the ability to make modding more than just a hobby and that it should perhaps be able to be a career for them if they so choose. Now what does this mean? We'll have to wait and see. It could mean a number of different things. One is simply you can have a great career in well, modern Starfield because the game will be around for many years to come. Maybe 10 years, maybe 15 years if uh, Skyrim is anything to go by. But it could also mean something else, couldn't it? And that Bethesda are considering monetizing, uh, monetization on mods. If they do go down that route, I hope they tread very, very carefully because part of what's made um, Skyrim and Fallout 4 so successful is the fact that mods are so easily uh, accessible. A potential way around this though would be something like you find in Microsoft Flight Simulator with the in-game marketplace. The third parties are put paid items in there as well as in the upcoming update, free updates will be fully available as well. If there's a choice between a load of free mods as well as mods that people may want to monetize, then you know, I don't think that's a major, major problem just so long as it's all handled correctly efficiently and with consideration to what's best for players. Paid mods after all could allow for uh, modders to go really all out there and uh, hire great teams and really create some expansive stuff just so long as the free mods continue to be a thing as well. Either way we're going to have to wait and see exactly what they mean when it comes to that. There was a slight lack of clarity and I think that lack of clarity was entirely intentional at this point. Now let's talk about ship upgrades and outposts. Building your ships, shipbuilding and outposts will require a lot of resources, a lot of in-game skills, so your character will have to be at a relatively high level with different traits and abilities unlocked, and that this will be well mid to late game content. Of course, you will be able to go in very early on and build your own ships or mod your own ships and create your own outposts, but if you really want to go crazy and build the best ships and the best outposts, then this will require extensive resources and extensive experience in the game. So yeah, that's the sort of thing that's going to be happening further down the road after you've spent many hours in the game. And again, Todd did speak about the ability to spend tens of hours and even hundreds of hours in Starfield. So they're definitely looking at this as a long-term game. Another interesting thing when it comes to spaceships is companions. Now we know you can hire a crew Turns out your crew members you can assign wherever you want. You can assign them to your spaceships or you can assign them to your outposts. 
These will give you benefits according to where they're signed and outposts can also be fully automated, allowing them to have their own little economy and generate money for you whilst you're away. But there are some people out there who may not want to use companions who may want to well, basically pilot their ship entirely on their own. Bethesda have confirmed that this will be possible. Although, uh, well, I do wonder just how efficient it would be to go down that route. Also, in terms of crew members, yes, it will be possible if you so desire to forgo human crew members and go for robot crew members. Now, it seems the options here would be limited because there's nowhere near as many um, robot NPCs as there are human NPCs. But it seems, nonetheless, that would be an option, at least kind of. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is skills. It turns out these are going to be tier based. So it sounds to me that these will work somewhat like Fallout 4, where you unlock a particular skill that could be engineering or computers or mechanics, and you can then unlock further related skills. So um, a skill related to further enhancing your abilities with mechanics, for example, or engineering. This is a tier based system. Um, unlike a tree-based system, you don't have a skill tree which would have various skills branching off for each other. So maybe you need to unlock engineering and computers to get to mechanics or vice versa. That's not going to be a thing. We will have a tier-based system. Um, interestingly, the skills are going to be represented by patches and that's some, we saw some of that in the showcase. This lovely little embroidered looking uh, patch that can be applied to your suit. So it sounds like any time you unlock a skill you'll be able to get this little patch that represents that skill and you'll be able to apply that to your suit so at a glance you'll be able to see exactly what your skills are and it seems that as you have other playthroughs on the game this will give you a little bit of additional character variety so a nice little touch there at any rate that's pretty much everything all the nice new information we've got about starfield let me know what you think about all of this in the comments section below what particularly stood out to you as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.